Welcome to Knowledge Graphs Lecture 1, Hands-on 1.1, Creating Knowledge Graph from Natural Language Text. My name is Tavea Tietz. And in this week's lecture, you already learned about the ambiguity of language, about what it means to understand, and then also about graphs and knowledge graphs in particular. And in this hands-on session, we want to take a look at what it means to create a small knowledge graph from natural language text. And of course, in this first hands-on, we don't want to give you the full technical pipeline. We want to see step by step what it means to do this as intuitive humans. Um, and let's start. So as we already learned in the lecture, natural language encodes semantics implicitly. And we want to take a look at an example of what that means. So Pipe Fiction was released in 1994. The film is in the genre of neo-noir. It plays in the city of Los Angeles and was directed by Quentin Tarantino. The actor John Travolta played the fictional character of Vincent Vega in the film. And as we can already see, there are a lot of, there's a lot of semantics in here implicitly. For example, we refer to the film in this text. And as humans, we already know, aha, uh -huh, pipe fiction is meant here with the film. Or when it says the film or it was directed by Quentin Tarantino, as humans, we directly know uh, Quentin Tarantino directed pipe fiction. But for machines, this is not that easy. However, knowledge graphs can help us to make this implicit knowledge in the text explicit. Just as a short reminder, a knowledge graph mainly describes real-world entities and the interrelations organized in a graph. A knowledge graph defines possible classes and relations of entities in a schema. It allows for potentially interrelating entities with each other and covers various topical domain, domains. And this is what we want to do in this example. So how can we extract a small knowledge graph from a simple text like this as humans? At first, we want to make this text a bit better digestible and break it down. That means we break this down in yeah, separate sentences. We have now four sentences. And when we look at it, we already understand the text much better because we get a better overview right. In a second step, we want to take a look at the content of the text. So what are important concepts here that help us to understand the text? And when I look at the first sentence, I think that the concept pipe fiction is really necessary to understand this text. And we note it down. And also in this uh, sentence, we have the year 1994 in which Pulp Fiction was released. So we also add this. In the second uh, sentence, we have the film is in the genre of neo-noir. So we also add film to our concepts. And I already prepared <laughs> the other concepts for you that I find important to really understand the text. We also have the concept genre, neo-noir, we have a city here, actor, fictional character, John Travolta, and so on. In the third step, we want to see what relations are given in the text. And when we look at the first sentence again, Pulp Fiction was released in 1994. Then the verb release gives us a hint of what this relation might be. So we note down the relation between Pulp Fiction and 1994. Here is release. And then we also have connection to another sentence, for example. Um, let's take a look at Pulp Fiction and film. Um, and as humans, we already understand that the film here is Pulp Fiction and um, or that Pulp Fiction is a film. And we note this down. And now we have a, is a relationship between Pulp Fiction and the film. And we can do this for all of the concepts here in our text. And I already noted this down for you. So we also have that Pulp Fiction has the genre neo-noir, for example. Um, we have 
a director here, that is Quentin Tarantino, we have John Travolta, who is an actor, and so on. But, as you already know, in a knowledge graph, we don't have just the opportunity to relate just some concepts with each other. We can also define instances, classes, class relationships and class hierarchies and literals. And we will do this on this small example as well. Let's take a look at, for example, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction is a very concrete thing. And for me here, this is an instance of something because there's just one Pulp Fiction movie that was released in 1994. Um, and that has the actor John Travolta, right? So for me, this is an instance of something. On the other hand, here we have film. And to me, film is a class because um, classes combine sets of things with similar properties. And other instances of this class film could be, for example, the movie uh, Titanic or the movie Grease. And therefore, we determine in this case that film is a class. And then we also have 1994 here. As humans, we already know, this is the year in which Pulp Fiction was released. And yeah, we determine in this case that is a literal because literals kind of yeah, describe um, instances or classes further. And later on, that this is a literal, that means that it doesn't get a URI, um, right? And we mark this yellow to be a literal. And I also want to say that this kind of modeling, which this task is called, is not the same for everybody and the same for every use case. So there's not one truth to do something like this. This always depends on the use case, as I said. That means how is the knowledge graph being used later on? How is it going to be queried? And so on. So this really depends. And um, I also assigned further classes here below. I make this a bit smaller. Um, we also have actor as a class um, with the instance John Travolta. We have fictional character and then with the instance Vincent Vega. But I, tr yeah, I also invite you to try this out on your own and see what your graph would look like. And then when you look um, at the graph we have is that we have now extracted and modeled everything that we can directly read in the text. But we can do much more, right? Because we can assign further classes and superclasses to the ones we already have. For example, we have John Travolta here as an instance and we already determined that John Travolta is an actor. So there's a is a relationship and an actor in my <laughs> opinion is, or in my mind, is a person. And we determine that this is a subclass relationship. So we write down actor is a subclass of person. Then we also know that Quentin Tarantino directed the movie Pulp Fiction. And to me, this means that Quentin Tarantino is a director. And we also note this down with and is a relationship. And then for me, a director is also a person and therefore we also assign this to be a subclass. Right. And now we can deduce further yeah, knowledge from our graph. We can, for example, deduce not only that John Travolta is an actor, we can also say John Travolta is a person just like Quentin Tarantino. And you can go on and uh, keep modeling here. But again, as I said, um, keep uh, paying attention to your use cases and what your knowledge graph actually has to do and how it should perform. And um, yeah, on the bottom here, we can also already see what else um, I modeled here. For example, I also said that person is a subclass of agent. And then we have, uh, in the end, Vincent Vega, John Travolta and Quentin Tarantino, who are all agents. Right. And this is a way how we as a human could approach something like this. 
But then it would also be interesting to see how would this work in an automated way and what could the result look like. And for this, I tried out GraphGPT, which uses GPT-3. And uh, let's take a look at um, the outcome. I also want to say that <laughs> we record this in March 2023, so things might already have changed when you look at this hands-on, so we just refer to this version here. And we can see that the graph already looks quite different. We don't have any um, classes in here, also no class hierarchies. We have simply um, instances like Pulp Fiction that is directly uh, connected to Los Angeles via the location property. And then we also don't have a direct connection between John Travolta or Vincent Vega and the movie Pulp Fiction um, at all. So this looks quite differently to uh, what we have done on our own. But also I invite you to try this out on your own and see how this works for you. Thank you for your attention, for this hands-on, and I'm happy to see you in the next lecture.